Hi, I'm Kemel Walford and this is Chem with Chem. On this channel, we solve chemistry problems, look at how chemistry can be applied to your everyday life. We help students prepare for their exams and we do experiments that are required at CSEC, CAPE and GCE, like the one we're going to do today. If this is your first time to this channel, please subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified the moment new content is added. Also, please like this video and share this video with anyone whom you think would find value in it. So in today's experiment, we're going to be determining the relative reactivity of four elements and we're going to use the information that we get to actually write a mini reactivity series. Or perhaps we could look at it in terms of football. Now, in 1998, when Jamaica qualified for the World Cup, hooray, there were 32 teams in the World Cup that year. No, I thought that Jamaica was going to play 31 matches. Silly me. Well, thankfully that was not the case. The teams were placed in groups of four and the, the top two teams from each group emerged and played against the top two teams from other groups in a knockout fashion until we arrived at the final two, who of course played in the finals. I think it was Brazil and France that year. Now, there's a saying in football that the, the ball is round, even though we know it's spherical. And that anything can happen on match day so this means that the number one ranked team can actually lose a match to the team that is ranked at number 20 for example how come well unlike teams that are affected by how the players feel on the day match conditions such as the turf the weather um, elements for example and elements reactivity or performance is the same on any given day. Potassium that's at the top of the reactivity series will always displace copper from the compound it forms in aqueous medium on any given day. We can say then that, that potassium has a greater reducing ability than copper or is just more reactive than copper. This is what we'll do today. We will be determining which of the four elements given is better at reducing another element from the compound that it forms in aqueous medium. How will this work? Well, we will use two metals, metals A and B, and four nitrates, the nitrates of A, B, C, and D, or you could just say A nitrate, B nitrate, C nitrate, D nitrate. Round one. So this is the fixture for the first round. In round one, we will react element A with the nitrate of B or B nitrate. And the aim there is to see if element A will displace B from B nitrate, followed by element A being reacted with, being reacted with nitrate of C to see if element A will displace C from C nitrate and final and the final match in um, that um, group is element A being reacted with the nitrate of D again to see if um, element A will displace D from D nitrate. And these matches can take place back to back or simultaneously. It's not like in real football. In, in round two, we're taking element B and we're reacting it with the nitrate of A to see if B will displace A from A nitrate, then we'll um, react element B with the nitrate of C, again to see if B will displace C from C nitrate, and finally, we will react element B with D nitrate to see if it will displace D from nitrate of D, D nitrate. Well, since the reactivity of each um, metal is fixed, we can get a truer reflection of the reducing power or the reactivity of each metal by using the results obtained to predict their relative reactivity or their reducing ability. We do not need to have metal C or D as their rank in our position can be determined by who was able to or unable to displace them. You would do a table of results like the one that is outlined here to ensure that you capture the appearance of element A and B, as well as the nitrates to which they're added and any changes that occur.
in the interpretation of um, results or better yet in the treatment of results you're going to write balanced chemical equations that are explaining any observed changes and in the discussion you would now explain what is happening in each of these reactions in light of the changes that were given and you cannot have an experiment without your conclusion so your conclusion is where you actually give an answer to the aim you would actually write your mini reactivity series of the four elements that are given have fun